First up, it's a challenge perennially for sports journalists at the Boston Globe. How do you cover the Red Sox aggressively when the team's owner also happens to own your paper? Well, judging from the Globe's coverage of the controversial Mookie Betts trade, they have cracked the code. You just report like there's no conflict at all. You were great to me, Boston. Given everything that Mookie Betts accomplished in nine years with the Red Sox, there was no question the team's decision to trade him to the L.A. Dodgers was a huge story. The deal is reportedly done. In Betts, they let go of a generational talent. Fans, of course, devastated. It also put journalists at the Boston Globe in an awkward spot. After all, the same man, John Henry, just happens to own both the Globe and the Sox. Good morning. And was front and center as the team tried to justify a deal that left fans seething. It was one of the toughest, one of the most difficult decisions we've ever had to make. But if Henry's dual roles made things uncomfortable for Globe staffers, you would never know it from their coverage. Columnist Dan Shaughnessy called that presser a flop and said the trade shows the Red Sox have already given up on 2020. This is a salary dump. It does not make them better. For his part, Red Sox reporter Pete Abraham called the deal an organizational failure and said Henry and company have a communication problem. And sports media columnist Chad Finn was dejected, terming the trade soulless and urging Dodgers fans to enjoy the incredible gift the Red Sox just gave you. Throughout, there were repeated reminders that Henry owns the Globe and the Sox. Without them, you just might have forgotten. So I started off in that piece praising the Globe's journalists because I do think they were in a really awkward position and they acquitted themselves terrifically. But I should probably also praise John Henry and Linda Henry for creating a culture in which they feel comfortable doing the sort of work they did. Because if I had to do something analogous here, you know, I don't know what it would be exactly, um, I'm not sure I'd be willing to be as vocal and aggressive as, as the Globe's journals were. So kudos to the Henrys, too, I think. Yeah, I don't think there's ever actually been, for, in, all the times, in all the time the Henrys have owned the Globe, there has never been a problem or conflict for the sports department. I think John Henry was very clear from the outset that cover us like you cover anyone. I don't think any, I think he understands that to muzzle someone like Dan Shaughnessy in a sports market like Boston is a huge mistake. You lose all of your credibility instantaneously. And really the whole thing go that goes for the entire really excellent sports department of the globe. So the, I think the concern or, you know, the, the, the awkwardness has always been more on the news side and on, you know, real estate deals, sort of interfaces mm -hmm. between the Red Sox organization, even the Globe organization and the city, I think that's where you're going to see a more acute that's conflict. A mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think people were still worried when he originally bought the Globe, would there be a firewall between the sports re uh, reporting of the Red Sox and his ownership of the paper? And I think this is further evidence that indeed they are separate. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how the Red Sox handle things once we learn from Major League Baseball about what happens with the cheating scandal. It's almost like they had a little preparation here mm -hmm. on how they market this, how they talk about it, uh, whether or not they have uh, their new GM talk about it. I noticed he wasn't at the news conference. I am Bloom. So uh, I think that there's another shoe to fall. Buckle your seatbelts. It's going to be one heck of a season as far as news coverage of the Boston Globe and sports coverage, or excuse me, of the Boston Red Sox. Well, I agree with everything you've said. I think that the Globe journalists have been very tough on what was a terrible trade, and so uh, good for them. I do want to talk about a couple of challenges that are coming up. Michael, Mike mentioned one of them. Um, everybody is acting as though the cheating scandal did not extend to the Red Sox. Well, we're going to find out in about a week, and it will be interesting to see how that's covered. The other thing is there are some aspects to this trade that have been explored a little bit. Uh, in particular, Alex Verdugo, the new outfielder, uh, was reportedly present in the situation where a teammate has been accused of sexual assault of an underage girl. Now, the Globe did a story on it, and uh, it was not a flattering story, certainly, but my sense is that more follow-up is needed, and I hope we see that. Um, so I also agree with Mike about this in terms of the cheating thing. Cheating thing is, you know, that's hanging over a lot of Boston branded teams, as we know. So that's a bigger deal to me. I mean, I recognize Mookie Betts. Even I know that was a horrible move. I don't even, can't even explain it. Um, so I thought that the way that they handled it was great. And and then I'm imagining to myself, if the Globe Sports Department had just sort of said, well, that was terrible, that 
you know, that wasn't going to fly with anybody. That was, they, were, they would look crazy. They would just look really. So they had to be where they would be uh, in reporting it if they had, even if they had another owner. You know what I mean? It's, that's what it is, and you've got to talk about it. The other thing that is still floating around out there uh, is the David Ortiz shooting, which, uh, as I recall, you know, he'd hired Ed Davis and uh, I can't remember what other you know, big-name luminaries to get to the bottom of what happened. There hasn't been a check-in on that. I'd personally love to read a check-in, and I was reminded of that uh, because Ortiz came out, I think just yesterday, and complained that the guy who'd blown the whistles on cheating with the Houston Astros was, he called him a snitch. That was and said he shouldn't have talked, which is really embarrassing. <laughs> a, a black eye for a beloved person linked to that organization. So whether there will be some coverage of his characterization of the cheating scandal will be interesting. Yes, sir. All right, I guess that's it. Any yeah. parting thoughts? Well, you know, I, it's interesting. This whole cheating thing has led to this whole uh, thing among players, and it's being covered. Uh, they call it uh, player empowerment. Everybody's pointing fingers at the Astros. They're criticizing the Astros, and it's getting a lot of coverage. And we'll see whether it continues to get that kind of coverage and how that kind of, um, if it does impact the Red Sox, how it comes back to uh, affect them, if it does indeed, because it's hurting the Astros in a very big way. And we saw a Little League team. Do you see this the other Day. Yeah, a, a little league team said we're not going to name our kids the Astros anymore. Apparently, so, several wow. of them. Yeah, have several done of them that. have yeah. done that. So, and, and wouldn't it be devastating if that happens with the Red Sox? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. But you know, yeah. I just feel like in a sports town like Boston, with a sports media all around like Boston, which is probably the loudest sports media in the country, you're not you you're not going to see any anyone quieted down. It's just not going to happen. All right.